The Toll of a Lost Soul When Jua was about nine years old, a mysterious and inexplicable incident took place that almost claimed her mother's life. At the time, Jua's family resided in a congested two-bedroom apartment located in a rundown building with peeling paint and creaky floorboards. The windows were cracked and the walls were thin, offering scant protection from the elements. Nevertheless, they managed to make the most of their humble abode's deteriorated state. Jua is a kind and compassionate girl with a mature and responsible demeanor. She often takes charge of her younger siblings and ensures that they are taken care of. Despite being quiet and reserved, Jua has a strong presence that commands attention and respect. Her actions speak to her unwavering dedication to her siblings, always prioritizing their needs before her own. She has a petite build, with a slender frame and delicate features. Her long black hair was always neatly tied back in a ponytail, accentuating her youthful face and the soft lines of her jaw. Her big brown eyes were her most striking feature, conveying a sense of warmth and compassion that drew people to her. She had a gentle smile that would light up her face, making those around her feel welcomed and at ease. Her parents needed to attend an important family meeting and entrusted Jua and her older sister True with the responsibility of caring for their seven younger siblings. Being the second oldest daughter in a large family, Jua eagerly embraced the task, ensuring that her siblings were well cared for and safe while her parents were away. As the day wore on and they immersed themselves in their games, suddenly, thunderous knock shattered their peaceful playtime. Jua's parents had always warned them never to open the door to strangers or peek out the window, so the curtains remained tightly drawn. But Jua couldn't resist the urge to investigate the commotion. She cautiously approached the curtain, her heart racing with trepidation. Through the narrow gap, she caught a glimpse of a young man she didn't recognize. She quickly retreated to the bedroom, her siblings in tow. Huddled together in fear, they waited in silence. Jua's mind raced with the worst-case scenarios, her heart pounding with each passing moment. Eventually, she mustered the courage to return to the living room, where she sat frozen in terror, her eyes fixed on the door, waiting for something to happen. As the persistent knocking continued, True, Jua's older sister, emerged from the bedroom, unable to resist her curiosity. She cautiously peeked through the window, her eyes fixed on the stranger outside. Jua watched in horror as the man began gesturing for them to open the door, but she shook her head in fear, signaling her reluctance to let him inside. Despite Jua's silent protest, True walked over to the door and opened it, allowing the man to enter their home. Overwhelmed with fear, Jua sprinted into the hallway, her mind racing with uncertainty and panic. She could hear the man and True talking, but their conversation was muffled and incomprehensible. She cautiously peered around the corner, her eyes fixed on the man as he conversed with True in a low and persuasive tone. Jua's heart raced with anxiety as she tried to decipher the man's intentions. Although True appeared to be mesmerized by the man, Jua's instincts told her that something was amiss. However, she knew that she had to protect her younger siblings, so she stayed in the hallway, keeping a watchful eye on the man and True. As she watched them continue to converse, Jua could feel her hands trembling with fear, but she tried to remain calm and alert, ready to take action if the man posed a threat to their safety. After what felt like an eternity, the front door finally swung open. True was momentarily caught off guard by the sudden appearance of her parents, but she quickly regained her composure and introduced them to the man who was sitting in their living room. Jua felt a sense of relief upon seeing her parents, but their expressions revealed their surprise and discomfort at the sight of a stranger in their home. 
On becoming aware that the younger siblings were missing, Jua's mother sprang into action. Her heart pounded with fear and uncertainty as she rushed towards the bedroom to check on them. Meanwhile, Jua's father did his best to remain calm and engage in small talk with the stranger. The young man, who introduced himself as Eugen, spoke in a desperate tone. He explained that he had traveled a long way and was attempting to return home to Minnesota. Eugen had become separated from his friends and was stranded without a ride. He expressed that he could use some assistance. Despite feeling uneasy about the stranger's presence, Jua's father remained hospitable. He listened attentively to Eugen's story and was eager to assist in any way he could. Jua's father empathized with Eugen's situation and initiated a discussion about possible solutions to help him return home safely. Upon hearing Eugen's response, Jua's father grew increasingly skeptical. Eugen claimed to have traveled a long distance with his friends, but it was hard to believe that a group of friends would ever abandon one another on such a journey. Furthermore, it didn't make sense that Eugen had come all the way to California without any relatives to rely on. The more Eugen spoke, the more her father began to question his motives. He couldn't shake off the feeling that something was off about the story. Although he still wanted to help Eugen, he knew he had to be cautious. He tried again to ask more questions, hoping to understand Eugen's situation better, but the answers received only deepened his doubts. At that point, Jua's father was unsure whether he could trust Eugen or not. Eugen's impatience was palpable as he grew increasingly annoyed with the small talk. Without any hesitation, he abruptly asked Jua's father for $20, making his intentions clear. This demand left Jua's father feeling uneasy and powerless, as their financial situation was already precarious and they were struggling to get by. Despite feeling guilty for not being able to provide Eugen with the help he was seeking, Jua's father attempted to explain their circumstances to him as best he could hoping that Eugen would show some understanding. Jua's father recognized Eugen's distress, and kindly offered him a meal. But Eugen politely declined while expressing his gratitude. As Eugen bid his farewell and walked away, Jua's father observed a mix of emotions on Eugen's face, including sadness, frustration, and perhaps even a hint of shame. Despite Eugen's emotional response, Jua's father still felt conflicting emotions of empathy and suspicion, unsure of Eugen's true motives. Jua's father closed the door with a loud thud, his face contorted with anger, fear, and disappointment. Tears flowed down True's face as she struggled to explain why she had opened the door for the stranger. She felt like she was being controlled by the man and couldn't recall why she had obeyed his commands, which only added to her feelings of helplessness and confusion. True was consumed with shame and guilt for endangering her siblings, and her voice wavered with emotion as she apologized repeatedly to her father and promised never to make the same mistake again. Despite her genuine remorse, Jua's father still felt a knot of frustration and worry in his chest. Relieved that everyone was safe but unable to shake off the fear and uncertainty that the incident had caused. Several weeks passed, and just when things seemed to calm down, Jua's mother fell severely ill. Despite numerous tests, doctors remained baffled by the cause of her sickness. As the days wore on, Jua's mother's condition deteriorated rapidly, leaving her weak and bedridden. Jua watched helplessly as her mother's once vibrant spirit slowly faded away. The sight of her mother lying in bed, her face contorted in pain, was almost too much for Jua to bear. Every groan that escaped her mother's lips felt like a thousand knives stabbing at Jua's heart. The uncertainty of her mother's illness weighed heavily on her mind. She prayed with all her heart for her mother's recovery 
but the fear that she might lose her was overwhelming. Every moment felt like an eternity, and Jua's emotions were a roller coaster. Despite the good test results, her mother's condition only continued to worsen. It seemed like the illness had taken hold of her mother's body and refused to let go. The weight of the situation was almost too much to bear, and she felt like her world was collapsing around her. Jua's father was consumed by feelings of helplessness and desperation, driving him to seek the aid of Grandpa Chong Zheng, a respected traditional Hmong shaman who was known for his ability to heal the sick when modern medicine proved insufficient. Her father hoped that Grandpa Chong Zheng could provide answers for her mother's mysterious illness. Before leaving, he reminded Jua to not allow anyone into the house, stressing the importance of staying safe and protected. Jua nodded in agreement, fully aware of the seriousness of the situation. Upon her father's departure, Jua turned on the television for her younger siblings, hoping to provide them with some distraction and comfort. She kept the volume low, mindful of not disturbing her mother, whose weakened voice made it challenging to hear if she called out. As some of her siblings began to feel hungry, Jua searched through the pantry for snacks to appease them. However, she suddenly froze upon hearing muffled voices emanating from her parents' room. Fear and anticipation gripped her as she strained to listen. Initially, she tried to convince herself that it was just her mother talking in her sleep. As the conversation persisted, her growing conviction that someone else was in the room with her mother only heightened her anxiety. The voices sounded hushed and secretive, as though the people in the room were trying to keep their presence hidden. Jua's mind raced with fear and suspicion. She knew that she had to investigate, to find out what was happening. Taking a deep breath, Jua tiptoed towards the room, her heart pounding with anticipation. As she reached the door, she hesitated for a moment, her mind spinning with possibilities. With a trembling hand, Jua pushed open the door, the creaking sound of the hinges filling the air. She stepped into the room, her eyes scanning the darkness for any sign of danger. Her heart racing with fear and adrenaline, she knew that she had to be prepared for whatever lay ahead. To her surprise, her mother was sound asleep, and the room was eerily quiet except for the soft moans of pain that escaped her lips. The sight of her mother's peaceful slumber was a temporary relief. But Jua couldn't shake off the feeling that something was wrong. The silence in the room was suffocating, and her mind was racing with worry and confusion as she struggled to comprehend what was happening. Jua approached her mother with caution and asked if she required any assistance, but there was no answer. She repeated her question, this time with a tinge of anxiety in her voice. Her mother opened her eyes wearily and responded weakly with a simple no. Despite the response, Jua detected a sense of apprehension and worry in her mother's eyes, which made her uneasy. She felt a knot form in her stomach as she came to the realization that something was amiss and her mother was concealing it from her. Leaving the room, she closed the door behind her, but not completely allowing a sliver of light to shine through. As she walked down the dimly lit hallway, strange sounds and whispers echoed towards her from behind. Fear crept up on her and she hurried back to the room. With trembling hands, she pushed the door open and saw her mother sleeping peacefully in bed. She approached her mother's side with cautious steps and watched her chest rise and fall rhythmically, a sense of relief washing over her. In that moment, the strange noises and whispers that had sent her into a panic were forgotten. Jua heard the jingling of keys signaling her father's return. As the front door swung open, 
she rushed towards him, eager to share the strange events of the day. A mix of fear and uncertainty clouded her mind, causing beads of sweat to form on her forehead as she sought reassurance from her father that everything would be okay, and that her mother would recover. As Jua's father walked in, an old frail-looking grandpa followed closely behind, carrying a bag full of tools. Jua's attention was immediately drawn to the elderly man, whose deeply etched lines on his weathered face, thin and white hair, and slight hand tremble caught her eye. She couldn't help but wonder how he would be able to assist her mother. However, as he noticed her staring, his eyes twinkled with kindness and reassurance. He spoke softly, his warm smile radiating comfort, and assured her that there was no need to be afraid. He promised to do everything in his power to help her mother. Then, he turned and followed her father to the bedroom. Jia quickly grabbed the heavy bag of tools and rushed after her father and grandpa Chong Zhang. As soon as they entered, something inexplicable happened to her mother. In a sudden, eerie ease, her mother rose from the bed. Her movements fluid and without hesitation. Jua was stunned and bewildered as her mother's painful groans transformed into an unearthly voice that sent shivers down her spine. The voice was low and menacing, as if it belonged to a malevolent entity that had taken over her mother's body. Jua's mind raced with terror and disbelief as she struggled to comprehend what was happening before her eyes. As Grandpa Chong Zhang approached the bed, Jua's mother's face contorted with agony, and she let out a guttural groan. Her eyes flickered with a mix of hope and suspicion as she looked up at him. He smiled reassuringly, took a sip of his holy water, and began to chant mystical words while spraying the water around her. Jua's mother continued to writhe in pain, her body twisting and turning with each passing second. Her face bore the marks of suffering, with deep furrows etched on her forehead and sweat trickling down her temples as she clenched her fists in agony. Jua's eyes widened in shock as Grandpa Chong Zhang retrieved a knife as large as a sword from his bag. She couldn't help but notice the several red strings tightly wrapped around the hilt in an intricate knot. Despite their worn and frayed appearance, the strings emitted an eerie glow in the dimly lit room. The sight of them intensified the already foreboding atmosphere. It was as if the strings were a harbinger of the immense power that Grandpa Chong Zhang was about to unleash. As he began to chant in a low, soft voice, Jua found herself entranced by the rhythmic and melodic words. It was as if the sound had a hypnotic effect on her, drawing her in closer. In his hand, the knife seemed to come alive, as if it were an extension of his immense power. With awe, Jua watched as he deftly moved the knife around her mother's body, his chanting growing louder and more intense with each passing moment. The blade seemed to dance through the air, leaving behind a trail of energy that Jua could almost see. She was mesmerized by the his skill with the knife, as if he knew exactly where to cut, apply pressure, and avoid. Despite the sharpness of the blade, it was not a weapon of harm, but a tool of healing. As the chanting continued, Jua's mother's movements became more and more erratic. Jua watched in distress as her mother twisted and contorted, clearly in agony. It was a difficult sight to bear, and she could feel her own unease growing. She couldn't understand why Grandpa Chong Zhang was subjecting her mother to such intense pain and didn't know how much longer she could bear to watch the ritual unfold. But just as Jua was about to lose all hope, something miraculous happened. Her mother's shaking slowed, and the pain etched on her face began to subside. Jua felt a wave of relief, grateful that her mother's suffering was coming to an end. Grandpa Chong Zhang's hands moved with intense concentration and focused energy. As he retrieved a vibrant red string from his knife, and carefully looped it around Jua's mother's neck. He breathed deeply and began to chant softly, 
his voice low and melodious as he tied the knots with steady hands. Despite the gravity of the situation, Grandpa Chong Zhang remained serene, emanating a sense of peace that slowly settled over the room. With the red strings securely tied, Zhuo's mother finally calmed down, breathing peacefully once more. But there was no time to waste. Grandpa Chong Zhang urgently turned his attention to Zhuo's father, issuing a solemn command. He needed Zhuo's father to quickly prepare his bench and set up his altar, for time was of the essence. Grandpa Chong Zhang knew that he had to embark on a perilous journey to the spirit realm to protect Zhuo's mother's soul, which had been taken by a malevolent entity. The weight of the task at hand was palpable, and his words carried a sense of urgency and gravity that left Jua's father feeling overwhelmed. Jua's father quickly gathered all the items that Grandpa Chong Zhang required. He lit candles and incense, filling the air with a mystical and captivating aroma that transported them to another realm. The scent was both calming and invigorating, lingering in the air and swirling around him as he adorned his vibrant red veil and took a seat on his bench. Joss papers were burned, adding to the mystical atmosphere of the room. His assistant struck the gong, breaking the stillness with its deep and resonant sound. Grandpa Chong Zhang's bells jingled in his hands as he entered a trance-like state. He softly chanted under his breath. His eyes closed in deep concentration. Every passing moment was crucial in their race to protect Jua's mother's soul. As Grandpa Chong Zhang finished, he slowly lifted his veil and turned to Jua's father with a grave expression. After a moment of silence, he spoke in a hushed and ominous tone. There was a lost soul that visited your home, he said, and it was not given the help it sought. He paused, letting the words hang in the air. As a result, your wife's soul was taken as a toll. The room was filled with a sense of impending doom and fear. Jua's father felt a chill run down his spine and her father waited anxiously for his next words, hoping for a solution to the terrifying problem that had befallen his family. Grandpa Chong Zhang's words hung in the air, heavy with foreboding. Jua's father could feel his heart racing as he waited for the next words to come. He desperately hoped that there was a solution to the terrifying problem that had befallen his family. But fear not, Grandpa Chong Zhang said, breaking the silence. I have taken care of the lost soul. It will not trouble your family again. Jua's father let out a sigh of relief, grateful for the old man's expertise. Still, the fear lingered, and he knew that they could never be too careful when it came to the supernatural. He looked at Grandpa Chong Zhang with a mixture of gratitude and apprehension, wondering what other dangers might be lurking just beyond their sight. Upon processing everything, Jua was flooded with a mix of emotions. The realized that a simple act of donation could lead to such dire consequences filled her with terror. However, she found comfort in the guidance and support of Grandpa Chong Zhang. Jua felt grateful for his help in safeguarding their family and leading them through this traumatic experience. She knew that the lessons they learned and the significance of being cautious in the face of uncertainty would stay with them forever.